Hey guys, in this video we're going to be talking about a general structure of amino acids and the different, form of, different forms of amino acid, acids that exist at different pHs. So let's start out with the general structure. As the name specify, it must have an amine group and an acid group, so that's why they're called amino acids. So on this general structure here, I have the COOH, which is obviously going to be your carboxylic acid. And then on the left side, you got this NH2, which is going to be called an amine group. So that's why they're amino acids. Obviously, the carboxylic acid is going to be the acidic. The amines are basic. Doesn't necessarily mean that you cannot protonate those. You can still protonate those, but they are um, their nature is to be basic in generally. So you have both the acid and the base on the same compound in this particular case. And then what you have in between the amine group and this carboxylic acid group is this carbon right there. And this carbon is called an alpha carbon. One of the atoms on this alpha carbon is always going to be H, like we have here on the top. And the other atom or the other group of atoms on this particular alpha carbon is going to be what that's going to be varying going going from one amino acid to another amino acid. So there are 20 amino acids that are found in nature. There are some other amino acids besides 20 amino acids, but they are going to be derived amino acids. But the one that's found in nature are only 20. And everything else stays the same in those 20 amino acids except this R group. All right, so this R group is the one that differentiates one amino acid from another amino acid and then you're still going to have the amine group you're still going to have the carboxyl group you're still going to have this middle carbon or the alpha carbon and that alpha carbon is still going to have the hydrogen attached to it okay so that's the just the general structure structure of this amino acid not necessarily how it exists at a particular ph we'll talk about that in a minute but before we jump into that i want to talk about uh, what what particular amino acid exists mostly in nature so it's going to be the l types if you recall from the sugars so you sh in sugars you have the d types and the l sugars in case of sugars the your most common sugars are going to be the d types but when you talk about amino acids your most common amino acids going to be the l amino acids so if i want to represent a fissure projection on those as well it's going to be easier to recognize whether you have a L amino acid or a D amino acid. Just like how we have either a ketone or an aldehyde group in the sugars, we will have this carboxylic acid group on the top. Or another way of saying the most oxidized carbon stays on the top. And then you're going to have this R group on the bottom, just like you would have a CH2OH group in case of sugars. And then on this horizontal lines, you're going to have the hydrogen and the NH2. Okay, so if your NH2 is on the right side, like in this particular case, it's going to be a D amino acid. And if your NH2 is going to be on the left side, then it would have been L amino acid. I'll copy that down here. Let's take that out. Okay, so this one is going to be the L amino acid. And like I said, your L amino acid is going to be the most commonly found in nature. And uh, what our body synthesizes and what our body uses as well, it's going to be the L type of uh, amino acid. So memorize it like this way l means like and d means dislike so in, in case of amino acids you your body likes the l type and dislike the d type and most of in terms of uh, configurations most of your l amino acids are going to be s configurations i'm going to say that again not all of them but most of them will be s configurations that are coming from l amino acids and uh, in that and the other is also true the most of the d con d forms of amino acids are going to be r configurations but i'm not going to talk about the r and the s here just be able to recognize what's going to be the d and l based on this common um, fissure projections 
Okay, now how does amino acid really exist at different pHs? Obviously, this structure that I have shown, that's not the, the actual structure, it's just the representation. Uh, depending on what the pH you're dealing with, they're going to have a different, uh, slightly different structure depending on what gets pronated and depronated. So at a very low pH, which means under acidic conditions, so let's say A here, let's call the structure A means under acidic conditions. Um, so you can say at low pH. At low pH, you're going to have your amines. Since your amines are basic, they are going to be protonated. So that's why it's existing as an NH3 plus form. And your carboxylic acid are also going to be in the protonated form. So this is the condition, this is the structure you're going to have at a low, low pH. Now, if you add water to it and try to make it dilute and uh, to kind of bring up the pH, and in that case, your water will actually take out the proton from this carboxylic acid first. And when it takes out the proton from this carboxylic acid, you will have a negative charge right here. And at this particular time, you're going to have an equal positive and negative charge on a given structure or another way of saying you got a positive here and a negative here so that your net charge is going to be zero so when your net charge is zero we're going to be calling this neutral and a fancy name for that is Zwitter ion so it's going to be Zwitter ion at Zwitter ion, the amount of positive and negative are the same, so there's no net charge on the molecule. So as you move along or as you increase the pH or kind of going more close to the physiological pH, which is roughly uh, 7.4, you're going to have most of your amino acid being existed in the form of a Zwitter ion. Let's say I'm trying to add some more base onto it, or another way of saying I'm increasing the pH, so at high pH now. So we're talking about pH 11, 12, and so on. So at high pH, you're going to be start deprotonating your NH3 plus as well. So when you lose that pro proton, you're going to have an NH2 here and the O minus there. So this is going to be your basic form of amino acid, so I'm going to call that B. Okay, so it's very important to be able to understand, understand under acidic condition what form of amino acid will exist under roughly physiological conditions, what form of amino acid predominate, and at high pH, what form of amino acid predominate. So questions could be like, you could be given any amino acid, so I have written down R here, so that could be applied to glycine or proline or any amino acids, and as long as you keep track of what gets pronated and what does not get pronated, you will be able to figure out what's going to be the form of amino acid at a given pH.